the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially they who labor in the word and doctrine amen, amen. may god bless the reading of his word amen. god bless you please be seated <clears throat> for our sunday school this morning our message today is mostly referring to the authorities we have always tried to build up the body but also there is a portion of the word that has to do with the leadership and rulership if the body of christ has got to be perfect the head must be good then the rest of the body will be all right so today i like for us to turn our attention mostly to what saint paul by the holy spirit was saying to the churches for he says what i say to one i say to all a couple of events have taken place in our family of god that has necessitated for us to check back again and know exactly what god requires from those of us who by the grace of god have found ourselves in office or in place of authority ruling over the body of christ the scripture we have just read was talking about elders as rulers it says let the elders who rule well so an elder is a ruler is that scripture is that scripture an elder is a ruler now if you look at the traditional setting but the bible says natural things teach us spiritual things naturally an elder is a ruler even in tradition in the villages his age his experience in life because he has been able to overcome many things and live long his age alone makes him a ruler over those that are far younger but the way he applies his wisdom the way he applies his age or his position for a man living long is purely the grace of god for no man has authority over his life the important thing is the way he applies it for the well-being of the younger ones that is what brings to him honor or disgrace there are many old men in the village poor men poor but you see you can't do nothing in that community without inviting them because they have an influence they have an honor they may not be rich in worldly materials but they are blessed with natural wisdom and the way they apply that wisdom or experience wins for them respect for their for his mates and his juniors so whenever something very important is to be done the poor old man is invited because his wealth of experience is needed for the well-being of all so when we understand that naturally then we can understand it spiritually amen, amen. tony is still testing we will all pray for him yeah he's still testing i know he's still testing that's good the service is on he's still testing so but also in villages or towns you will find elders who are tremendously rich rich in the sense that they labored when they were young and accumulated wealth or they had children who one way or the other found themselves rich and by that make their parents rich 
But these old men are never invited when things are or things important are going to be decided. Because they may have the worldly things but no natural wisdom. Or if they have the natural wisdom, the way they apply it does not go well for the well-being of their communities. So they are ignored. That also reflects in the community of God, in the household of God. St. Paul clearly says that only the elders that rule well will be counted for honor. Only those that rule well. If you read between the lines, it means that some, though they are elders, but never rule well. Is that scripture? Yeah. If it is scripture, I want to hear you. Yeah. The elder who rules well is honored. The elder who does not rule well is not honored. All right. In the book of First Timothy, chapter 3, we read from verse 1 to 7. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, able to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy looker, but patient, not a brawler, not curvaceous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Can we say amen? Now, every qualification that we have just read here is a must in the life of anyone who is supposed to be an elder. A must, not maybe, not shall. It's compulsory. It is mandatory that an elder, which is a man, or a bishop, which is his office, or responsibility, an overseer. All right? He must. The first word there is blameless. Must. If an elder is blameless in all that we have just read, then he will rule well. And he will win for himself double honor. Because people will always want him to rule, always continue to rule. I can use some natural examples to type what I'm saying. There was a man, I think it was in Yugoslavia, called Tito. Most of you heard about him. He was a great leader. Uh, in France, they had De Gaulle. He was a great leader, a good leader. And when his tenure of office was over, he resigned. And the country got into trouble and they called him back. There are a couple of them like that. And each time his term is over, he goes away. And when they have political upheavals, they call him back. Double honor, double honor. 
They keep honoring him because when he comes, he rules like a father. He doesn't know who is from his town or who is his tribe or who is not his tribe. He doesn't care about that. He was a father to all. And when any matter comes up, he approaches it objectively. It doesn't matter who is involved at all. See? And people say, hey, that's the type of leader we want. And the moment the tr country is in trouble, they invite him. See? But there are others that just will not get away until they kill him there. Because he's such a bad leader, and they say, go away. And he won't go there, they kill him. That shows a, 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 a ruler that rules well and wins for himself honor and rulers that do not rule well and lose their lives in the process. So we see that an elder in the house of God must be blameless in these matters. That does not mean that an elder cannot make mistakes. He's a human. He's a human. But there are some aspects that have to do with his office that he must not abuse. The husband of one wife, then he must be vigilant. Watching what? What is he vigilant about? Vigilant. See? He must be vigilant to know when there is a sign of a wolf among the sheep. He must be able to detect an error, a wrong doctrine, an evil influence, a move of the enemy, because he's the ruler of the people. Vigilant. He must be sober at all times. Sober. Sober means a lot. Clear-headed. Your head must be clear. Your heart must be clear. Not like Balaam, who was blinded by filthy lucre, personal gain, blinded Balaam and beclouded his heart. So he was not sober. Good behavior. Good behavior. A newcomer comes and interacts with an elder or a ruler and he goes away with a wonderful impression. Not just interacting with a ruler or a leader, an elder, and goes away disappointed. Very disappointed. He must be given to hospitality and able to teach the word. Not only standing on the pulpit and teaching, but privately, publicly, whatever the occasion demands. An elder or a ruler in the house of God must be able to know what is right and what is wrong from the Bible point of view. Amen. Not by what you feel, not what you think, not what people say. For every situation that comes up in God's household, a ruler, an elder, to be able to discern because he's vigilant, watching. And the moment the enemy raises his ugly head, you can detect the head of the enemy when he raises it up. And able to teach what the scripture has to say concerning that situation. Amen. Amen. Not given to wine, not drunken and just loving to drink. Not striker. A striker is somebody who is always quick to bet. Let us bet. Let us bet. If this does not happen, if this all happens, let us bet. An elder has no time for that. Tell the person what God says, leave him alone. There's no need betting with anybody. See? In those days, they call it to strike. See? Uh, let me tell you, if this does not happen, that will happen. Let us bet. Many people do that. This finger was not given to us to bet. They always use the small finger. I don't know about the big one. See? A ruler in the house of God has no time for such a thing. Arguments and arguments and arguments and arguments and arguments and finally it ends up in a bet. Not greedy or filthy lucre. He's not in a hurry to gain. Because the Bible says some people 
think that to, to be godly is gain. What you can gain. If you can't gain nothing, then you become devilish. A leader in the house of God is not a greedy person. You don't, because of what you will gain, take sides with the devil. Or blind your eyes to the evil. Or give a judgment that is unrighteous. Unbalanced. Because of gain. A ruler in the house of God must know that all rulership comes from above. Amen. God is the only ruler. Amen. We are all merely instruments in his hands. The moment you sit to judge any case, remember you are sitting on the seat of Moses. And Moses was sitting on the seat of God. Amen. And every judgment you pass there, if it is not righteous, it comes back to you. Because every judgment must be righteous. Doesn't matter who is involved. Doesn't matter at all. Could be anybody. Because you know what you're trying to dish out is the will of God. One time, a young man was arrested in the field for defying the word of God by Moses. And he was arrested in the field on the Sabbath when he should be at home. And he was arrested and brought to Moses. And Moses had no judgment, no precept, no commandment concerning that. Moses did not presume that the best thing to do is to slap the boy two times and let him go. Or give him 12 lashes and let him go. Moses said, lock him up until tomorrow when I hear from God. And they took that boy and locked him up. And Moses went to the Lord and asked, what shall be done to this boy? You see, Moses never presumed. He never imagined. And he never said, well, he's a small boy, leave him alone. See, he had to hear from God. And God said, that boy must die. Just a young boy. Maybe 15, I don't know. The Almighty said, that boy must die. Now, what do you think the congregation did when Moses said, bring that boy to me? And they did. And he said, take him outside the camp and put him to death. What did you think the congregation did? Did they say, praise the Lord? They thought Moses was cruel. They thought Moses was wicked. He was going too far. I mean, the boy just went out. He didn't they do anything wrong. I mean, you have locked him for one day. That's enough. Let him go. But God said that boy must die. It didn't matter to Moses what they thought. He said, put him to death. And they killed him. You see, some things we think are nothing. Those are the things that are things before God. And the things we think are great, God ignores them. Because he said, my ways are not your ways. See, it's not your ways. We must stop measuring God with our feeble minds. So Moses was such a ruler that it was difficult to understand him. Moses couldn't even understand himself. He thought of dying many times. He begged God to kill him many times. Because what he thought was not what God was thinking. See? And there was nothing he could do but do that which God commanded. And that's the church that is the church of God. The one that is led by the Holy Ghost. So, an elder must not be covetous, must not be greedy, he must be patient, not a brawler. A brawler is somebody I, I give too much. Talks and talks, you can hear his voice from miles away. Brawling. An elder shouldn't be found in such a case. And then he must not be covetous. He sees a car, he wants to have that type of car. He sees the house, he wants to build that type of house. He sees this one, he wants greedy, greedy, greedy. Covetous. A ruler must not be found in such a thing. That is God's word. God can give you the desire of your heart. But don't covet. Because covetousness can make you do many things wrong. Just to get at what you want. 
even if it's not God's will for you to get it at that time. Let me testify to the glory of God that the good Lord has given me every desire of my heart. Amen. That is true. I mean what I've said. I have desired a couple of things in my life. I have prayed to God about it. And I just leave it there. And how they will come, I cannot tell. But I just find that one day, I see the thing I desired and I prayed about it long time ago has become my own. <laughs> and when it's coming, I won't realize it until after it has become my own and it is nothing to me anymore. Then my heart will go back to a certain time that I prayed to God for this thing. And then here it is. I don't even know I have it. And God shows to me that you can have this, but that's not the solution. So I get that thing and it means nothing to me. See? Finally, it means nothing. When I didn't have it, I thought, oh my God, this is, can you give me this thing? I'll be happy if you give it to me. Just like a boy will ask his father for a toy. Now, Daddy, buy me, like my son says, buy me a airplane. I said, okay, I'll buy you a airplane. You know, get an airplane, give it to him, and he throws it down two or three times, and the two legs break off. And the next thing is forgotten about it. See? Uh, mommy bought my little boy a, a nice flashing car for his birthday. Oh, that boy fell heaven and earth has completed. And we'll wind the car and give it to him and the car runs down there and turns around and oh my God, all his friends run around. And he felt so big, he's got a car. The next day he stood, he wanted to enter into the car. <laughs> Very small like this. So he, he said that he wants to go inside. I said, you cannot go inside, it's too small. So he thought, I don't mean what, I don't understand him. He took it out and met his juniors and they all tried to open up the car for him to go inside. And they ruined the car. See? Now where the car is, he doesn't know. And he doesn't care. That momentous joy just came and went and that's all. And that's all, we all, we're just big, big children. Everything we have is a big toy. See? It's a big toy, that's all we have. But let me tell you, all the big toys you have only give you problem. That's all. Just like you ruin his car and he can't ride it anymore. So also our tires puncture and we have no money for another tire. Just a big toy, give us all kinds of headache. But we think, well, if we get this thing, with the whole world is completed. Yeah, we discover that everything that comes, comes with this problem. With this problem. It's true. So we are thankful to the Lord that he has told us, don't covet. Yeah. The reason is you can get everything and yet that's not the solution. There is something above these toys. God has taught me. He says if you live fathers and mothers and brothers and everything else, you will get everything else in this world. I left my father and mother and everything else and followed God. He has given me everything else he promised. See? He gave me a house, now house don't mean nothing to me. Give me a car, it doesn't mean nothing to me. Give me a wife, I'm thankful for it. Give me children, I'm thankful for it. But God still tells me there is more. There is a higher promise. Amen. See? There's a higher promise. And that's what I'm looking up to. Amen. Not the things of this earth anymore. Because I've seen that all these things, a man can have them, and yet it's nothing. So why covet? <clears throat> All right, so an elder must be patient. He must be one that rules his house. His house means his wife. <clears throat> when the Bible says to rule your house, it means your wife. If you see also in verse 4, it says his own house. Then it says having his children in subjection with all gravity. You may have a wife and no children. You have a house because your wife is your house. Yeah. Not the building, not the building at all. A man may live in a house without a wife. You don't rule the windows and doors. See? So your house is your wife because the wife is the home. Did you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. For the home to be sweet is the woman. For the home to be horrible is the woman. So it is the woman that is the house. Then, after that, the children 
must be obedient. It's a must. And then, you must not be a novice or a fall into condemnation of the devil. Seven, he must be of good report to people outside. Or he fall into reproach. If an elder has no good report from people outside, what I mean by good report is not surrounding what you believe, but your conduct, the things they see, the things you do to them or with them, and they cannot testify that this man is really an elder. Now the Yorubas have a very derogatory name they call Abaya. An old man that is just good for nothing. There's a reason why they call such names to such people. Because of their actions and behaviors and conduct. All right. In 1 Timothy chapter 5 again, verse 1 and 2, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger man as brethren, the elder woman as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. Amen. Amen. Now notice, I've heard some people say, why do you call your pastor daddy? Huh? Why do you call uh, all those women mommy? Why? It's a, it's, a, it's a denominational. If you hear such things, don't answer. Just go your way. Those men are ignorant. Paul called many people in his Bible his children. Begotten in the gospel. The Bible says you should regard elders as your fathers. That's what the Bible said. I don't care what somebody said. Please, don't look at me like that. I want you to answer me. Amen. That's better. I'm not a fiend. I'm your brother. Amen. That's right. That's right. Now, and regard the elderly women as your mother. For the Bible says, when your father and your mother, natural, forsake you and cast you out, then God will receive you. Amen. Then in God, you will have fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers. That's the word of God. Amen. Whatever anybody else say, that's what that person said. All right. He says, don't rebuke them, but treat them as fathers. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What a tremendous honor and regard that the Holy Spirit has given to those who are supposed to be elders and rulers, they are not supposed to be rebuked openly or rebuked when they misbehave, but treat them gently with respect. See? But that is on the condition that verse uh, 19, verse 20, only you are not supposed to rebuke them if verse 20 does not come to pass. Because verse 20 said he broke them. If verse 19 is present, look at verse 20. Then that sin rebuke before all, that others may fear. Yes, when an elder is rebuked, everybody else will mind themselves. Am I correct? Yeah. But look at verse 19. Against an elder receive not an accusation but before two or three witnesses. Verse 1 said, don't rebuke them. Treat them as fathers. That's fine. But if they fall below expectation to verse 20, then we look for verse 19. And if verse 19 is present, then they find themselves worthy of rebuke. And that is what we must all watch out for because being elders means nothing to the word of God. The word of God is above an elder. Amen. The word of God is above a pastor. Amen. Above a prophet. Amen. Above any man that ever lived. Amen. The word of God is above all. Amen. For the word of God is God himself. Amen. The word of God is God. So if verse 19 is present, then verse 20 will come to pass if that check is not there 
then the elders will behave anyhow they want to. Whether the report within is good or bad, they don't care. Whether the report from outside is good or bad, they don't care. Because the Bible says don't rebuke them. But the Bible also says in verse 20, that if verse 19 is present, then verse 20 will come to pass. That is to check you and me. To know that no one is above the word of God. Amen. Does that sound good to you? Amen. Recently I did tell the church that finally we have a head of state that has enough courage to set up a panel to investigate military officers. It has started. And some of the administrators that were just removed are going to be probed. It has just started. Now, if the military will probe military, what will civilians do? The Bible says if the righteous is scarcely saved, where will the unbeliever find himself? Now, see what happened in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew 15, the first three verses. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they, are, when they eat. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? Let's stop there for a minute. Now here came Pharisees from Jerusalem asking the Lord, our elders have a tradition and your apostles are breaking it. You see, because the elders were so powerful and they were the rulers of the people, there was no one with the courage to correct what they were doing by the word of God. So their tradition became accepted as the will of God. That a man must wash his hand before he eat. It's only hygienical. It is not the word of God. There is nowhere God says that you must wash your hand before you eat. But you see, it became this tradition becomes so powerful because the, the elders who instituted it were the supreme authorities. So it was accepted as the law. And when God Almighty came here and he didn't take sides with the tradition of the elders, then the elders sent disciples or their, their faithfuls to confront him. Who gave you the authority to go outside the tradition of the elders? Not even the word of God, tradition, custom. And the Lord said, but why do you too break the word of God by keeping your tradition? You know the rest of the story. So it was tradition against the word of God. I would rather break a tradition than break the word of God. Amen. Because you cannot break the word of God. He says the word of God cannot be broken. But traditions can be broken. Amen. See? So we don't want to get to the point where we become so institutionalized and our ideas and our feelings become accepted as the will of God. Because we have three kinds of believers in every body of Christ. You see those who gather and those who don't care and those who scatter. You must be one of them. Every single one here must be either a gatherer of souls or careless church members whether there's a gathering or doesn't matter you know then there are others whose job is just to scatter them go to elders pollute their hearts go to deacons pollute them go from house to house pollute everybody because they themselves are pollution there are people you talk to and you become a better christian Huh? You go home and you become a better Christian. There are people you talk to, you don't get nothing, you don't lose nothing. You are just the same you. Then there are others you talk to. When you go back home, you won't, you won't be able to pray that day. You won't be able to read your Bible that day. 
you just say, eh, Naso, God forbid, batting. Eh? You start seeing devils as angels and start seeing angels as devils. It's because you have tasted a polluted soul. And that's all he can do to you, pollute you too. Pollution. There are people who are nothing but pollution. Satan came to the Garden of Eden, polluted everybody. Because he is pollution himself. I said I was going to say some hard things today. But these things are for your good. Somebody said, these are hard sayings, who can hear them? Well, somebody said, we're not going to anywhere, we'll, we'll hear even harder things. <laughs> we are ready to hear harder things. Because it is the word of life. It is the word of life. All right. Titus chapter 1. Are we there? Titus is before, before what? Philemon. Okay, and Hebrews, just around there. Now, <clears throat> chapters 1 and verse 5. Verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot, unruly, for a bishop must be blameless, as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to fill the looker, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word, as he had been thought that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not. For what reason? Fear the lookers sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Amen. Amen. Now here was Paul speaking to Timothy. Paul had appointed Timothy an elder. See? Because Paul saw that Timothy was worthy. And so he left him in the nation of Crete to appoint people he thinks are worthy to be elders. And gave him responsibility. Above all, he says your first assignment is to stop the mouth of filthy game talkers. There are people whose mouth must be stopped. And we have a lot of them in this church. We have a lot of them. Teach things that they ought not. Fulfill the Lucas sake. Slow bellies, the Bible called them. Always liars. The Bible said they're not even human beings. They are evil beasts. You know who the beast is? In Genesis, the beast was. In Isaiah, the beast was. In Revelation, the beast is. Always evil. People talking, but spiritually they are beasts. Evil beasts. Says their mouth must be stopped because they have to be rebuked. That's the responsibility of elders. When an elder has lost that authority, the ability to stop vain talkers, to rebuke liars, to put to an end the operation of these evil beasts. They are not fit to be called elders. You don't have to be scared. If God gives you an assignment, God will give you enough power behind it Amen. to be able to execute that office. Paul has seen this condition in the church in Crete. Not in the Roman Catholic church or Anglican. No, it was in the church of saints. Saints. A church like our own. 
Paul saw evil beasts in the church. He saw liars, always liars. They didn't lie once or twice. Each time they spoke, they were lying. He says that uh, in verse, uh, let me see. Look at verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially of the Christian uh, circumcision, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert how many people? The whole family. They just subvert them. You go into the world and win souls to Christ, then this evil beast go to their home and turn them upside down. Hello, brother. Ha, 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 ha. They have a Bible in their hand and may be a sermon book too. Coming, pretending to be believers, pretending to be brothers. But when they finish their visit, you don't go to church again. The whole house is subverted. See? Just pollute the woman or pollute the man or pollute all of them. All you need to do is strike the shepherd. The sheep will scatter. That's all. Call them against the pastor or whatever. And that's the end of it. And they don't know that they have been subverted. And the only people that can be subverted are people who can be subverted. Yeah. You see, the prophet said God put something in the heart of every true child of God. Yeah. That thing is called discernment. Yeah. The ability to discern. Yeah. The moment a man or a woman starts talking, that machine starts working. Yeah. If you listen to it, it will tell you yeah. that the man talking to you is a servant of God. Or the person talking to you is an evil beast. You will know. If a preacher comes to your house and uh, starts preaching, that thing will tell you right away. This man has brought you the good news. Or this man is a liar. Because he can't be speaking the truth and lying at the same time. No. It's either the whole thing is a lie or the whole thing is truth. Let me tell you something. If you drop one drop, just a drop of poison in a cup of tea, what has that to become? Poisonous? Poisonous? Just one drop? Poisonous. All right. What if you pour a whole cup of tea inside one drop of poison? Poisonous. Huh? Poisonous. All right. So there is no way you can dilute lie with truth. It will still be a lie. And there is no way you can dilute truth with lie. It will still be a lie. The Bible says God is truth. Yeah. In him there is no lies at all. Yeah. Because if there's any small lie, the whole thing has become a lie. That is why these people, the Bible describes them as always liars. Always. We are going to heaven since. I don't believe in gambling. I don't. I was reading a magazine where somebody was writing on the title of See What They Are Doing to God. I don't know how many of you read it. This week, published it. God bless you, my son. God bless you. He says, See What They Are Doing to God. If you want to read it, I'll give you. I'll give you. They mentioned the name of almost all the big evangelists and, and bishops and pastors that are sweeping this country there. They mention all their names. You know what they call them? They say, more mammon, less God. More money, less God. Then they describe all the gimmicks and all the tricks that they were playing on people. They describe how before you are prayed for, you pay a certain amount of money. Or you promise to pay it that weekend, not more than that weekend. If not, they won't pray for you. All the tricks that they play, pretending to be doing miracles. More mammon, less God. The man says, see what they are doing to God. I wept in the aircraft. While I was reading it, my heart was bleeding. What men are doing and don't know that all they are accumulating in this world. They said some of them are, are, are 500 million naira worth. One man can boast of 500 million cash. Not property that they have. They investigated it. See? They said that one bishop, one archbishop confessed that he is a, he's an international beggar. That he is just an executive beggar. Written there, his picture is there. See? That's what people are doing. And people gather there by hundreds of thousands. They said there was one convention. The speaker stood up and said he had seen a vision. And in that vision, one man was pregnant on his back. 
pregnant on his back, brothers. And then one person has snake inside him. The other one has lizard inside him. And all of them must come forward. And before the prayer, they give a sizable offering. Before they are prayed for. See? All these things are all manipulations of the devil. And the congregation accepted that as God. See? One had a vision that God said he must buy some, I forgot the name of the jet, the type that Abacha drives, aeroplane, that God showed him in a vision to conquer the world for Christ. He must buy aeroplane in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. See? Oh my God. That is what the Bible calls always liars. Liars. How can one man conquer the world? How can one man preach this gospel to the whole world? Even if he has 25 aeroplanes, one man cannot do it. Jesus did not commit the gospel to one man. He says, I'll pour my spirit on all flesh. Yeah. African flesh, Chinese flesh, American flesh, German flesh, everybody. Yeah. Always liars, evil beasts. Somebody was telling me in the East, when are you going to be on TV? I said, when God says so. He says, I'm surprised that you are not even thinking of that. Why don't you go on TV and let them hear you? Let Nigeria hear you. I said, they hear me. He said, no, brother, they don't hear you. They should hear you. I said, well, I only go as God leads me. If God says I'll be there, I'll be there. Amen. I said, those men, they are millionaires, you don't know. They are multi-millionaires. Most of them are not preachers. They are not servants of God. But they use that as a cover. To what other things they do. And I said, you know how much it will cost to preach for three months? He said, no. I said, well, find out. I don't have that money. I will keep preaching to the ordinary people. <laughs> See, that's what Jesus did. He preached to the ordinary people. <laughs> and if it, the time comes to preach to great men, God will make a way. <laughs> God will make a way. I'm not in a hurry. I don't compete with anybody. <laughs> All right. So, elders are ordained to do a certain job. Stop the mouth of gainsayers, vain talkers, deceivers of whole families, teaching things that ought not. Fill the lookers. Fill the gain. Looker is money. See? Everything you can gain just by talking nonsense. You keep talking nonsense. When we have elders that can be influenced, elders that can be influenced, then that's not an elder. An elder should influence the people. An elder should teach the people. Not people teaching the elder what to do. The Bible says he should be apt to teach. Able to teach. Alright. What about Hebrews 2? Hebrews 11 verse 2. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Can we say Amen. Yeah. By faith. Who knows the meaning of faith? Revelation. Amen. By revelation from God, the elders are supposed to have revelation from God. God should reveal to an elder what is coming, what is happening, what has happened. God should be able to to have good relationship with each elder to be able to give him inspiration and revelation by these revelations in the past we say experience but now not only experience we need revelation because the elders of nat natural elders work by their experience by virtue of their age but you see now we have to have experience and also revelation by this the elders of the past obtain a good report because things are revealed to them and they act upon the revelation that they receive not not feelings not how you feel when you're happy you act happy when you're not happy you act not happy or say things according to feeling or what you had or what somebody said or what you think but what God revealed to you for so God can never reveal a lie God can never reveal that a man has, is pregnant on his back. There is no possibility of that. There is nothing on the back. Nothing on the back. I hope it's in the magazine. 
a man stood up and said, God showed to him that a man was pregnant on the back. And in the whole conference, nobody saw anybody with a pregnancy on the back. But he said he saw that. That wasn't revelation from God. No, that was something else. All right. <clears throat> By revelation alone, that's the only way the elder is above the rest. Because he must walk by spiritual guidance. Not just by the way he feels or thinks. You must have the relationship with God which will make him happy enough to reveal to you things ahead so that you have what to teach the congregation. How to feed the people. Paul said, I give to you such as I receive from God. You see, God had to reveal to him first and then he'll show it to the people. Can we say amen? amen? Now if an elder does not have that connection, something is missing. Not only an elder, all of us. And then the book of James, chapters, uh, chapters 5, after Hebrews, James chapters 5, verse 14. If any sick among you, let him call the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. What a promise. See, that should challenge every elder to fit into this prescription. So righteous, so blameless, so godly, until he can be trusted by the sick person. I say, call me that elder, call me this elder. He can be recognized, not as a brawler and a striker and, and uh, someone who is not fit to be invited for a situation like that. Or an elder that runs away from responsibility. And the elder should extinguish himself so much that the people will have so much confidence that a sick man will say, call me such and such. The Bible says if such an elder is qualified, the one who lives well, controls his house, obedient, able to teach, vigilant, sober, the one who can stop the mouth of gay talkers and deceivers and subverters of whole house. That's the type that God will hear his prayer and the sick person will be made well because God promised it. And if an elder that is qualified comes and anoints him, God will take over from there. Amen. Amen. All right. Glory be to our God. Amen. Let me read First Peter chapter 5 and verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, whom I am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not fulfill the lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being laws over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? Here Peter ties himself among the elders. See? Peter says he himself is also an elder. And so he commands those of us who are elders to mind what we are doing with the sheep. Not for field lucre, but ready mind. When elders are influenced by field lookers, they disqualify themselves. Knowing that the chief shepherd shall come. Who will reward us when we have served and fed the sheep willingly? Willingly. All right. Look at also the book of John, chapters 8 and verse 9. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Amen. Amen. Here we see elders caught in wrongdoing, beginning from the eldest. Here were elders among the juniors carrying stones elders acting like small children 
The young men carry stones to stone a woman. The elders carry stone too. And the Lord looked at those elders and looked at the young ones. And said, okay, any of you that have no sin, throw the first stone. The Bible says they began to disappear beginning from the elders. Because the elders know better. The young ones were watching the old ones to see what the old ones will do. But because they did not act as elders, like the message we had some time ago on judgment, if we judge ourselves, we are no more to be judged. You see, these elders would have called these young men back and said, listen, where is the man? The man wasn't there. He says, well, our judgment is not complete. See? Don't pick stones. Don't take this girl to anywhere. Wait until we see the man. No! The elders themselves behaved stupidly. They joined the young ones. They were carried away by the, by the, the situation or the circumstances. They did not hold back patient as elders and say, hey, this judgment is not right. I remember one time they were judging Jesus and they were going to condemn him. One elder stood up and said, wait a minute. Does our law condemn somebody before we hear from the person? They said, what are you talking? He said, I mean our law. Does it condemn somebody before we bring the person and hear him? They said, hey, are you his disciple too? He said, I don't know about that, but we have a law. And our law says we should hear from somebody before we condemn the person. He acted like an elder. You know why? He was a righteous man. He was a secret disciple himself. See, he knew that the people were wrong. The, the motive was wrong. So they gave a wrong judgment. And that was why he did not join them. But this time, the elders joined the people and behaved like children. And when Jesus spoke those words, their conscience condemned them. And beginning from those elders, who should have shown a better example? Like we read here in, in, in Titus. It says the elders should be an example to others. Is that correct? Yes. Those men were the first to drop their stones. And they went away and the young people saw that the elders have dropped their stones. They dropped their own too and followed. Because they were watching their elders. And when we get to the point where elders are now watching the people, then those people are not fit to be elders. Or when the elders start acting like, like people who are not elders, then they are not qualified to be elders. Here they were caught being wrong. Look at the book of Third John. Third John, uh, I believe chapter, just one verse, one chapter rather, verse uh, we read from verse from verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, received us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren. And forbidden them that ruled, and casted them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Demetrius had good report of all men, and of the truth itself. Yea. And we also bear record, and ye know that our record is true. Amen. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. All right. Here we see two elders in the same church. Two elders in the same church. One is Diotrephes, one is De Demetrius. One is an elder puffed up with pride. I will not listen to nothing. The Bible said he was self-willed. Apart from that, he is known to be an evil talker. Prating, prating. To prat means 
Go to this place, talk, talk. Go to the other place, talk, talk. Go to that place, talk. With malicious words. Who was he talking against? St. John. Talking against St. John. And he wrote to the church concerning some certain things that ought to be done. And uh, dear to says, impossible. It will never happen in this church. And those who said, no, it, it should happen, he kicked them out. Evil beasts. Evil beasts. See? But Demetrius was the obedient type. That's the one they call me because he's obedient. He obeys what the apostles said and does what he was commanded to do. Like Paul will write to Timothy and Timothy will do it. John writes to Demetrius and Demetrius will do it. But John refers, he doesn't want to listen to anybody. No Paul, no John, no James, nobody. Don't tell me nothing. I'm independent. He does what he likes. Prating against us with malicious words. But John said, when I come, I will remember all that he has done. Yeah, they can always do that behind, not before. See? So we see that it is possible to have an elder who is disobedient or an elder who is obedient. And that's why the Bible says the elder who rules well. When you have a divided elder in a church, it is not good for that church. When you have elders divided against themselves, for a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. See, the church should be of one mind, our year should be yea, our nay should be nay. Whatever we condemn, we all condemn. Whatever we approve, we all approve. Whatever we bind, we all bind. Whatever we lose, we all lose. That's the scripture. Glory be to our God. Let us close by one more scripture here. Back to First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. From verse 8. Likewise amongst the deacons. Likewise must the deacons be gray. Not double tongued. Not given to much wine. Not greedy or filthy looker. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon. Found blameless. Even so must their wives be gray. Not slanderous. Sober. Faithful. In all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou might, mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Amen. Amen. That was Paul concluding to Timothy. The qualifications of elders and deacons. You see that the deacons also have the same qualifications, the same expectations from God. And also a very great responsibility on their shoulders. To be able to watch over the church. The most have a wife that's obedient, not a slanderer. To slander is to spoil people's name. Busybody about. People who just cannot think twice. They just stand like this microphone. And you're talking to them. Talk, 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 talk. They can't think. And they just go away influenced by what they had. See? They just move around slandering and slandering and children that are not obedient to their parents. Paul says, I will come to you shortly. Just like the Lord Jesus will soon come. But he says, if I tarry long, just like the Lord Jesus may tarry long, that you may know how to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the pillar huh? and ground of the truth. We all ought to know how to behave ourselves in the house of God. Glory be to his name. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to his name. Today, I want to say that the board of our elders in the church, by the end of this month, will be dissolved. And the deacons of our church, by the end of this month, will be dissolved. And we are going to appoint new elders and new deacons. They are going to involve some of the ones that are already serving now. And others will be dropped. Let's turn together. Jesu mi sheu Olorun mi sheu sheu Jesu mi sheu Olorun mi sheu Bebere mole mo bega mo gbe Jesu mi ga Owo mi loke ya Haleluya repete Jesu mi sheu Olorun mi sheu sheu Jesu mi sheu Allahu mi mo bere mole mo gbe ga owo mi loke ya hallelujah respect